So family, beautiful humanity. Wow, things are upside down. And I know a lot of you are feeling that these are some of the darkest days that we've ever seen, especially those of us who are Canadian. Uh, I just posted a video today of just a regular citizen just being full on arrested, just driving through a checkpoint and for no reason, just cops approaching with guns drawn and uh, bank accounts being frozen. Um, and then, you know, more and more evidence of uh, a coup happening, the World Economic Forum and how much they've infiltrated not only Canadian democracy, but many democracies around the world. And it is good that people are aware of this, that it's being shared and the people are really seeing what is really going on the tyranny that has been sort of working in the background of our world under the espionage of the media matrix is now being fully centered in a lot of people's attention and this is this is a good thing you know in esoteric spirituality we say when you name the demon you gain power over it and we're in that phase where the light of our consciousness is so strong and it's shining into the great shadows of our world, of our own collective unconscious, and it's exposing a lot of disgusting and horrifying things. And uh, I want to talk today about yet another horrifying thing, and I'm going to try and keep this somewhat light as well, you know, because I want people to understand that human beings at our essence we are extraordinary divine beings and we have extraordinary powers and potentials that the great mystics have been exemplars of the yogis the great mystic sages uh, of all over the world many different cultures have shown us a path of true sacred power and this is a grand initiation, what is going on right now on the planet. We are in a war, there's no doubt. But this is unlike wars of the past. We are no longer fighting with violence or physical might. We truly are the Shambhala warriors. And if you know the Tibetan Buddhist prophecy of the Shambhala warriors, they are said to arise in a time of the greatest darkness when what they render as the adversary, the barbarian kingdom is spread all over the world to the point where there is no sanctity, there is no safe sanctuary, that this battle must be waged on the territory of the barbarians for they have colonized the whole planet. And the Shambhala warriors are said to wield two extraordinary weapons. One is that they understand that everything is a construction of the human mind and thus everything can be dismantled by the human mind. This is why we are witnessing information warfare right now. People are becoming informed and through the knowledge they are taking in, they are hopefully actualizing that knowledge into responsive actions that are integrous, that are evolutionary, and the second tool that the Shambhala warriors wield is a radical perspective on the interdependence of all beings. They understand that we are all connected. And that connectivity, when you enter into the quantum realm, provides a whole other sphere of ways in which we can act in the world, in ways that we can wield the luminous weapons of the heart. And I'm going to share some spiritual visions and, and messages that I've received to really extrapolate that because it's important that we all know this. So years ago, I was in a, a sweat lodge ceremony near Toronto. And at the end of the ceremony, I, I felt the need to stay in the lodge after everyone had left and meditate. And I was gifted this vision under the full moon. And what I saw was uh, a person in my life who was at that point an antagonist 
we were in some form of conflict. And I had the feeling that this person was compromised, that they were not acting out of their own personal volition, that there was something that had almost possessed them to cause them to be such an antagonist. And they appeared to me filled with their rage and they were projecting it onto me. And I immediately was taken aback in this vision, just like, oh wow, why am I seeing this person right here, right now? But what I saw in the vision was suddenly they kind of faded into the background. And what I saw was this dragon, reptilian, malevolent force that was kind of flying around them and through them. And I, and I realized, ah, this entity has possessed them and is using them to uh, drive this malevolent force into our domain. So I started to have this kind of battle with this entity and my weapon was I exuded loving awareness. I just held the gaze of my heart and I beamed like the Care Bears, this kind of ray of love at this entity. And this entity grew very monstrous and started to rage at me and scream and yell and attempt to terrify me. But I was indomitable. Um, I'd actually had other episodes in my life where I've dealt with the demonic realm. So I have had experience, so I was not afraid. And I knew that I just had to stand my ground and that the power of love has an alchemizing energy. And at a certain point, as we went back and forth jostling, uh, we were each getting stronger in response to each other's strength. So as my power of love would radiate, emanate more powerfully, this entity's malevolence and monstrosity would grow. And we kept leveling up back and forth until a certain point where we just, at least I poofed into this higher dimension. It's like we crossed this threshold. And all of a sudden I was up high above, uh, above the clouds. And Grandmother Moon was shining there in immensity. And there was a group of us who were sitting in circle with Grandmother Moon at the apex. So we were coming out of her and everyone was painted white and we were shaved heads. Uh, it was very tribal and we were all kind of mystical sages. And Grandmother Moon was speaking to us and in the center of our circle this entity, this dragon entity was and Grandmother Moon said, all of you get into the frequency of unconditional love and we did so all in one coherent circle. And immediately, immediately this entity, it was like they turned into their fractal form. All you could see was if they were just like lines with dots, like their digitized essence. And then all of those lines, all of that quantum structure just collapsed into sparkles of light. And it was dissolved in an instant. All of this happened in an instant. And it, it was incredible. I was in awe to see the power of love initiated in a group field of that power. And Grandmother Moon said, These, this is the power of love, this is the weapons, the tools that you must use to deal with the adversary, adversaries that you're dealing with. And I've stayed with that ever since. And I've even led healing ceremonies when we've repeated that ritual that was taught to me by Grandmother Moon. And I share that with you now to take that as well. This is a universal spiritual medicine. And I'm going to be initiating some of these online in the very near, near future. It's been on my mind a lot to really work with the prayer of love, especially in these moments. So I invite you to get together, gathering in groups, the coherence of groups is, is very profound. And I invite you to hold those we are being programmed to loathe and hate, the Prime Minister the leaders of such nefarious entities as the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, the police, anyone who you might deem being compromised in their humanity and being activated in sociopathy and psychopathy as many of these agents of the state of empire are right now, to hold them in your circles with this fierce love. And make sure you connect to your hearts and make sure you're your hearts are connected to this cosmic energy of love so that it is replenished by the power of infinity. I invite you to do that. 
on that note, I want to name another demon that we're seeing in our world today. And, you know, I should also note, because I'm not someone who's into oppositional dualism, that in the ancient, some of the ancient spiritual literature, demon was actually um, spelled and pronounced daemon. And it meant a teaching spiritual being. And truly these demons, these demonic forces, are just some of the fiercest teachers that we have to deal with in our world. So on that note, uh, I want to bring to your attention something that I saw today on the Government of Canada website, uh, or and it was posted on February 11. And I posted this on my Instagram. I'll post a link to this. It's called Exploring Biodigital Convergence. And why this is relevant is this is, and I asked the question in a headline, what happens when biology and digital technology merge? We have to be aware of the transhumanist agenda right now because the World Economic Forum, Agenda 2030, all of these things have as one of their foundational thrusts into the world, transhumanism. And what that is, is this idea that the human being needs to be somehow augmented, improved, merged with technology, with machines, with AI. And I've covered this in depth already on former Wisdom Warrior chats, but it is time to really just reignite this conversation. Because I feel when I talked about this a few years ago, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was still very much on the fringe. And now we are seeing it emblazoned on our government websites as policy. And we have to be aware that they are now playing their hand. And these are the things that we need to resist. We need to see them and not look away from them. This is not about spreading fear or paranoia. There's nothing to be afraid of when you see these things. You must realize, as we saw in the film, The Wizard of Oz, that the tyrant, the wizard, the grand evil wizard, is really just a broken-hearted being that has not been loved and has been warped by not being loved. And if you want to connect all the dots to where this is all connected to, you can see also my talk on the Archons, which is a Gnostic, thousands and thousands year old, evidenced teaching about these negative extraterrestrial entities that we are coexisting with, that have hidden themselves in the energetic realms that we cannot see. And they have been interfacing and infiltrating human consciousness for eons, planting what the Gnostics called mind viruses. This may sound very sci-fi and dystopian, but I feel it's time to reiterate it because as you've seen, with our world nowadays, <laughs> truth is seemingly stranger than fiction by the day. And again, this is nothing to fear. The Gnostics, these ancient seers of Eurasia, they also said that these are actually our kind of teachers in a way. And the human being, when we actually become aware through spiritual arts and cultivation of our spirit, which is our essence, our soul power, when we come to awareness of our great innate divine gifts of our own natural divinity. We have so many tools to overcome these nefarious powers. Tools of just simple awareness, being able to control one's mind, for instance, is very powerful and valuable nowadays. We should be meditating each day. We should be investigating the belief systems that have been conditioned into us by our society. We should be, as the Shambhala warriors wielded, the powers of our mind and realize that Everything we see in the world is the product of a very abused and broken human-mindedness. And if we can start to bring all those fractured aspects of our collective together in our own selves and be paragons for what a whole human being, a holy whole human being would look like with integrity, bringing online the virtues of our soul, which is the alchemical way the ancient Chinese saw, the true evolution of the human being, infusing these vibrational principles that our visceral organs actually hold, called the virtues, which are the magnificent impulses. Or as the yogis would call, to bring on the siddhas, these superpowers of 
telepathy, telekinesis, clairvoyance, clairaudience. These are all spiritual powers, these metaphysical abilities that we can start to bring online. And many people already are bringing online their life, but on a very simple way, not to be too, too fantastical about it. Just having control of one's mind, freeing oneself from mental slavery is massive. So everyone should be meditating. We're all becoming initiated into being spiritual warriors right now. And we should all start looking because when we look, we shine the light of awareness out of our eyes and out of the eyes of our heart. And we need to look at these things with impartiality. You can let the emotion swell. You'll probably feel such things as hatred and anger and helplessness. That's okay. Let those emotions flow. But try and bring these things into a peaceful contemplation through your meditation. Let the genius that happens when you are present come forth and let the wisdom in your heart that is whispered to you by source intelligence, by the goddess herself, guide us all into the greatest action as Grandmother Moon guided me in that meditation. It is our destiny to overcome these things. When we look at the transhumanist agenda, what we are looking at is human beings who have been convinced that our natural humanity is something flawed. This is the carryover of ancient religious ideas. It is also the sociopathic perspective that nature itself is flawed. And these are old stories. So the antidote would be to actually exalt nature, our own nature, to embrace our humanity, to embrace the natural goodness of our souls that all the great mystical sages have said is the truth of our essence to spend much more time in nature and start to realize that we don't even need these governing systems anymore. They're very outmoded, antiquated. They require our cooperation. If we follow the philosophies of great nonviolent protests, such as enacted by Martin Luther King and Gandhi, we can start to realize we don't have to obey. We can be civilly disobedient as we should be when we see tyranny amidst us. We need to realize that those compromised human beings who are enacting the brokenness of empire, we need to help them. And we help them by first not cooperating. We draw a line and we draw a boundary and we say, my brother, my sister, no. I will not allow my morality be degraded. I will not go into that warped sickness of the soul that you have been struck with. But I will be here to help you if you are so willing to rebalance, to realign. Even the Archons, even these negative entities are said to be now joining the path of evolution and wanting to develop their own divinity and goodness, for they are also our kin. All things can be redeemed by the beautiful divine power of love. And it's not going to be an easy struggle by any means, but we wouldn't want it any other way. The powers of soul require tests, they require challenges, and over time the zest of the warrior is that we relish those challenges because it's another moment to show the incredible genius of our evolving powers of love and wisdom. This is the destiny before us. It's a mystery what will happen, but we are sovereign. Each and every day we can take control of our mind and our heart, and we can start to direct ourselves to good actions. Spend much more time creating the beautiful heaven on earth that I know is already being dreamed in all of our hearts. Such very pragmatic ideas such as starting to buy land, seek out indigenous peoples and wisdom keepers who know nature and the eco-spiritual essence of nature to help braid with them those that are willing to create strong and sturdy eco-communities where Mother Earth is resourced in rightness and in love, where we can go back to having sovereignty over our food and our waters. If enough of us do this, we can create little nodes, little patches of heaven on Earth. And over time, this will grow into a great mandala that will oh, pretty much outgrow the tyrannical empires. It will not be for everyone. People will choose fear. They will choose terror, and they will choose to be held in secure systems as the government will continue to promise and provide as they terrorize us into being obedient. But there is a strong group of us who see it a whole other way. 
And we align with the empire of love. We align with the earth. We align with great spirit. We align with the power of love. And this is the most amazing opportunity we've ever had to flex the muscles of our soul, to awaken the powers of our heart, to create a revolution of love, not of violence, but of ill will, a tantric, ever-weaving, interdependent war that will end all wars, because how can you have an interdependent war? It's the end of all wars, because it's the awakening that there is no conflict when we realize we are all together. That is the sanity of all war. It's just us slapping our own face, abusing ourselves. We have to realize that there is a dimension of great peace naturally happening on earth as she is, as we are. We can enter into that great peace at any moment we find the bridge of our breath and our awareness into the presence of our soul, the rhythm of our heart. And we need to bring that medicine more online. We need to galvanize our spirituality, the arts and sciences of unity, in the face of all these divisions that would try and tell us that some are tyrants, some are victims. We're all one family. And we will not be dismayed. We will not be convinced otherwise. We are unleashing the greatest power of love that has ever been known on this planet. And it will refuse no walls it will overcome them all with magical intelligence and genius so don't let any agenda 2030 or transhumanist agenda scare you these are but the tricks and the duplicities of a very wounded consciousness that is within us all the more healing we bear and bring to bear in our own lives the more we galvanize the beauty of the human soul and then togethering that in beautiful communities, we will find the true luminous weapons of the heart that are destined, as many mystics have prophesied, to win this war without any violence, a war that will end all wars, a war where we all come one. So stand with me in sacred solidarity, beautiful humanity. We were born for this.